video and talk to you about the sway bar disconnect. I've seen a couple of videos out there that talk about how you disconnect the really anti sway bar on a Rubicon where it's an electronic sway bar disconnect. And, and a couple of the videos basically just tell you to touch the button and activate the sway bar disconnect. And there's a little more to that and it could be frustrating if you just take that literally. Number one, you have to be in either a four wheel drive low or a four wheel drive high to disconnect the sway bar. And also the vehicle needs to be fairly even or level. The owner's manual talks about torque lock and if one tire is higher or lower than the other, it can get it in a bind and you won't be able to activate the sway bar disconnect. Also, when you're trying to deactivate the sway bar disconnect, if the vehicle's uneven, you might have torque lock as well. So what the owner manual, owner's manual recommends is that you drive and get a level surface and then either if you're trying to connect, try to connect again there or if you're trying to disconnect. But the button, um, this is a JK 2016 and the buttons for the, you hear somebody up there struggling? <laughs> it's the Toyota. He's stuck. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, for the sway bar, my sway bar is on right now. Vicki, can you uh, show the light that's illuminated? So it's the sway bar light right here. And if it's solid lit, then that means the sway bar is disconnected. If it's flashing, then it is not engaged in terms of the sway bar has not been disconnected. We've got somebody stuck up there. Yeah, he is stuck. We could kind of go around it, I think, but... Yeah, we could. Anyway, <laughs> the thing that prompted me to want to do the video is that a lot of times when you're off-roading, there's at least a portion of the trail that you're going to be on that you, you're in two-wheel drive. I'm in four-wheel drive right now, high, but a lot of this trail has been in two-wheel drive. It would be nice to be able to disengage your sway bar in two-wheel drive. But this JK, this 2016 JK, it's not designed that way. And my understanding is, is even the JLs, you can't disconnect the sway bar on the factory disconnect, electronic sway bar disconnect. So apparently there's an aftermarket software that will allow you to do that. But uh, if you try to disconnect the sway bar on the Rubicon using the electronic disconnect when it's in two wheel drive, it will just flash, and I'll try to show you that uh, in a little bit what that looks like after we go over this little obstacle. Oops, okay. I heard a shock hit. Owie. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's all good. So the main thing that I wanted to get out there is that on the JK and I think on the JL as well, that unless you've made some kind of software modification, you can't use the, on the, and I'm talking about the Rubicons that have the electronic disconnect for the sway bar. You can't use the sway bar disconnect when you're in two wheel drive. You have to be in either four wheel drive high or four, four wheel drive low. And according to the owner's manual, if you're having trouble getting it engaged or disengaged, you might have uh, torque lock, what they call torque lock. So you might have to get on some level ground. But other than that, it's easy. And uh, at 18 miles an hour, like if you've disengaged your sway bar on these Rubicons, at 18 miles an hour, it will re-engage the sway bar and it will keep it re-engaged 
until your speed drops back down to 14 miles an hour. That's according to the owner's manual. Okay, so right now we've got the sway bar disconnect on and it's solid yellow sway bar. So the sway bar is disconnected and we're doing a little over 10 miles an hour. If we get up to 18, you'll see it flash and that means that it's disconnected. Just disconnected, now it's flashing. Tail gunner crossing the grate. So now it's engaged again because I slowed the speed down. So it disengaged for just a moment when we when we got up to past 18. So now it's disengaged again. I'm doing 20 miles an hour. And it's blinking yellow. And when I slow back down, it will stop blinking and it'll go solid yellow. So we're solid yellow again, so the sway bar is disconnected. We're driving right now with the electronic uh, sway bar disconnect on. And you can really tell the difference, particularly when you have the washboard ripples on the road. It just travels a lot better. And that's the whole idea of disconnecting the sway bar is you get a lot more travel. You see examples online where they put uh, Jeeps up on a lift with the sway bar connected and then with it disengaged and you can get three, four inches more travel with it disengaged. So definitely when you're off-road, you get a lot better articulation, a lot better travel and uh, a lot better ride. Okay, right now I'm in two wheel drive and I'm gonna toggle the button for deactivating the sway bar and you'll see it'll just blink it won't go steady yellow it can engage so you have to be in either four-wheel drive high or four-wheel drive low in order for it to engage I'll put it in four-wheel drive high not completely level. Let me see if I move it a little bit, if it'll engage. There we go. And now we're engaged. Then to turn it back off, switch it again. All right, we're headed out right now. I hope that uh, we provided you with some information on the electronic sway bar disconnect for a Rubicon. Again, this is a 2016 JK Rubicon. So check your owner's manual for your particular gear model. And uh, from beautiful Southern California, the, going up into Big Bear Mountain. Thanks for joining us. And uh, please check out the channel and give us a like, subscribe and help us grow the channel. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, bye-bye.